Hey everyone, are you guys ready to learn some more Ruby? This video will be about, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about variable naming conventions and string concatenation. And then we'll move on to comparison operators and then control flow. We're going to end with uh, looping using uh, times, while, and until. So let's get started. Uh, first thing you want to talk about is about variable naming convention, which I did not mention in the first video. So for now, uh, there are many kinds of variables, but for now it suffice that you should know about local variables. Those are the variables that we're defining here in the local scope. So, for example, in the previous video, I set the age to some value. This is a local variable here. And uh, the naming convention for local variables is that all letters be lowercase. And if you have multiple words, you separate them with an underscore. For example, uh, if you want to say date of birth, for example, you would say like this. And the dates, whatever format you want. And what you wanted to get out of this is the naming convention for local variables is all lowercase followed by underscores if you have multiple words. Other languages like JavaScript, the convention is to use camel case like this but this is not the case for Ruby. The Ruby community has agreed upon a standard which is the lowercase. And if you tr try to do something other than that, you got, might run into some issues because uh, things like classes, modules, like there's a naming convention there and they're sort of a capital case. And uh, constants uh, are all caps. And so that's why you have to differentiate all these kind of variables by following a naming convention. Now that we have uh, touched upon that, uh, there's uh, also something I would like to talk about is, and that is concatenation. Uh, in the previous video, I talked about string interpolation. That is, you can just do things like hello your date of birth is and you can actually grab the value inside a variable date of birth by interpolating it within the within the uh, string that is within double quotes like so here we have a message and then we interpolate the date of birth variable so that we get its value upon output to the console using put s. Now you could also do this with string concatenation. So instead of interpolating you could close the string right there and add a plus in the variable name and that would also be okay. So here you have the string, then you use the plus side to concatenate, that is you put these things together as a single string. And that's the variable name and whose value is going to be substituted here. So you get the same output as before, hello, your date or birthday is, and so and so. You can also add something more concatenation there, I could add something Sorry about the screen, let us fix this. Uh, you could have something, hello, your date of birth is, and then add something else, like saying some exclamation points, and that will be there. So you can concatenate as much as you want, but make sure you close the quotes for the strings in the right place, and put a plus sign in between the elements that you have. Okay? 
Now, I would prefer using interpolation in most cases because it's so much nicer and I don't have to put uh, close the quote and put plus sign. So it's up to you to decide what context uh, it is. Uh, now uh, I would like to move on to comparison operators. Uh, last video we looked at mathematical operations, uh, arithmetic operations, addition, subtraction, product, and division and the module operator. Here we're all going to talk about is comparison that is greater than, less than, greater than or equal to is equal to, not equal to, and so on. So uh, this is very common among many programming languages. Uh, so if you want to check if a number, for example, 2, is it 2 less than 3? And uh, the answer is yes, right? So in Ruby there are uh, true and false as uh, objects. They're objects that uh, determine like whether an expression is true or false and they're kind of like booleans and they're objects in themselves so you can check out their class so class for f false is an object of a false class and true is an object of the true class which is self uh, an object okay uh, so the thing to keep in mind here is that Ruby has objects for true and false and because of that like uh, the only thing that's false in Ruby is going to be either false object or nil okay so anything everything else is going to be true so some languages uh, you can say zero is false and any other integer like one or whatever is true but in Ruby that is not the case zero is going to be true so watch out for that. Some languages take zero as false, but in Ruby, the only thing that's false is tr is uh, the false object and nil, the nil object. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now let's uh, take a look at other other comparisons. You can compare like with greater than two, greater than six. Obviously not. So it's false. And you can also do greater than or equal to, and that's true because two is greater than or equal to two. If it's greater than, obviously that's false because true is not greater than itself. You can do less than or equal to, and you can do. Now let's do equals. So it's 2 equals 2. That's true. Now keep in mind uh, the equal operator has two, the, two equal signs, not just one. So one equal sign means assignment operator, like you're assigning something to a variable. If you want to compare, you have to put two equal signs. Keep that in mind. So it's 2 equals, an, equals to 3, false. Now, if you want to check if it's not equal, all you do is you put a bang, an exclamation point there, and an equal sign. So 2 not equal to 3, that's true. 2 not equal to itself, false. And so on. Okay, so uh, these will be very useful as we go on to control flow. That's the next topic. Control flow allows you to control the flow of your program. So uh, you don't want your program to always do the same thing, always follow this linear path. So you want to be able to make it, to make decisions based on where you are in the program, based on some certain conditions. So uh, uh, we can do control flow. The most basic way to do control flow is with the if statement, and that's a uh, predominant in many many programming languages and that's kind of the building blocks of control flow so let's do an if statement in Ruby so for example if uh, 3 is greater than 2 what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put as yes 3 is greater than 2 and then I have to pipe the keyword end to finish the if block. 
so what happens here is it hits this condition it checks if it's true or false if it's true it's going to execute the if block here whatever is within the if statement block between the if and the end so it's going to say yes 3 is greater than 2 and just as a reminder everything in Ruby there's always a return something that is returned so the if statement here and you doing a put as this put as is going to return nil remember that from the last video so that's why you get that anyways uh, so what would happen if I put if 2 greater than 3 that's false right so let's do the same thing I'm going to copy this And don't forget the keyword and and you see nothing happen and that's because this condition here was checked and it turned out to be false so if it's false it doesn't do anything so the you can only execute the statements within the if block if the condition is true okay otherwise there's nothing else to do it just skips it now, uh, one thing I did here, if you notice, uh, in Ruby, you don't need parentheses for uh, the condition in the if statement. Some la other languages will require you to add parentheses like this, but in Ruby, that's not necessary. In fact, uh, the style, Ruby style, is to not have parentheses at all. And also, at, for every if keyword, you have to end it with a NAND keyword and put everything the, all the statements that you would like to be executed if this condition is true within the if block here between the uh, if condition and the end keyword and notice that I put two spaces of indentation here indentation is very important in programming allows your code to be uh, uh, more clear and uh, easy to read for more to your eyes so in Ruby the convention is to use two space indentation so put at least two spaces ideally I just use two uh, if you come from other languages you might uh, add four or even eight using a tab space yeah hard tab or whatever but in Ruby we do two spaces as the standard and it's soft tab so it's literally it's going to be two spaces and I I use a text editor like Sublime that already does that for me it takes a two space soft tab not the actual tab character which is the hard one alright so uh, so just keep in mind to make sure whenever you have an if block to indent everything between the if and the end with two spaces okay that's a good programming practice and style and that's gonna make you uh, it's gonna, that's the difference between a bad programmer and a good programmer so make sure to get your indentation right so now that we know the if statement let's make it a little bit more complex uh, so what if the condition in the if statement is false? We would like to handle that too. So how can we do that? That's when the else keyword comes along. So what are you going to do is you're going to have if 2 grand 3. Let's just repeat that thing. We're going to do that. And then what do you do is put else here. Else do something else. Nope that condition was false by the way I should have changed this text right it doesn't make sense anyways and don't forget the end so what happened here check this condition 2 greater than 3 that's false so it skips this block and goes to the else block and executes that so it says nope that condition was false so that's an else. It tries the condition in the if statement. If that is false, it goes to the else 
block and executes those conditions. Okay? So that's basic control flow using an if statement, if else statement. Now, uh, before we go on with the control flow, I would like to address the issue of having or running Ruby scripts on their own files. Right now, I've been using IRB, which is very nice, but uh, as programs get more complex, it's kind of a pain to have to type this every time and then return and press, press the up arrow to go to the previous statements and so on so I'm gonna stop using IRB from now on I'm gonna exit what I'm gonna do is to put my uh, Ruby code into a file so I'm gonna use touch to create a new file and I'm gonna call it uh, let's say control flow and the file extension for Ruby is RB so make sure you put all your script you name all the script files with the .rb extension Okay, I created the file, and I'm going to Sublime. I have it in another window already open for me. And I'm going to add the file here. And let's just put our Hello World on now. And to, so you know that to run Ruby scripts from the command line, all you have to do is call the Ruby command and give it a file name, like so. So that's going to execute the script, which just put as the Hello World here. So that's how we run a Ruby script from the command line. So we no longer have to be bound to IRB and uh, having to repeat things over and over. We can just type it here and save it and keep on working and making changes accordingly. Uh, I use Sublime, but there are other great ad text editors out there. You don't have to uh, use Sublime or anything. You can use any text editor, VI, Emacs. A uh, really good one that's an alternative to Sublime that I like is Atom. That's one that's really good. So, but my favorite uh, are is Sublime for Ruby. So, let's keep going. Uh, so, what we had there before was the if statement with some condition, right? And now, uh, this condition were good, but now I'd like to use variables in our comparisons because that's uh, what actually we actually do when we uh, develop software we're not going to just use numbers and compare them by themselves that's a really kind of redundant kind of thing so we want to compare variables and those whatever is starting those variables will be determine how your program is going to flow uh, say or like the age variable example let's say you're like a the age is like set your age to 20 and somehow you have your program checking hey you have to be 21 to do something so what you could do is do like if age is less than 21 you're gonna say a message or something hey you are not allowed here and if you are greater than or equal to 21 then you can say welcome come on in and always put the end statement there what I typically do is I always make sure that I type the keyword like if and else and always put the end right away and that way I never forget to add it because if you forget and you might run into issues debugging and sometimes you cannot see that you are missing an end statement and so on so make sure to I think it's a good practice that you the moment you type the keywords just add the end in there right away so what's gonna happen here is gonna check the value of age if it's less than 21 it's gonna display this message otherwise if it's uh, greater than or or equal to it's gonna display welcome come on in so let's test it out. We have this program. What is our? Do, what do we expect? Well, we expect. Uh, well, since the age is 20, 20 less than 21, and we're gonna get this message, right? So let's run it from the command line. I'm gonna do Ruby control flow. Dot rb. So indeed, hey, you're not allowed here because you're under 21. But what if I? Oh, I like 25. Now what would I get? Welcome. Come on in because I am greater than or equal to 21 my age 
variable here, value, I display this message. Keep in mind that you don't have to necessarily have only one statement. It could be as many statements as you are. You could have as many statements as you want. I could yes yeah, go back home many times or whatever. Welcome, come on in, entrance fee is for three dollars. Or if I change the age, say ten. You're not allowed here. Go back home many times. All right. Uh, so the next thing I would like to talk about is uh, how do you? Uh, it's using the if, else if, else statement. So uh, here we have a simple case where a, this is condition is true. Execute the ifs statement. If it's false, execute the else. But what if we want something in between? We want to check many conditions, not just with one condition. What you could do is uh, you could add an else if, and let's say uh, I, well, I'm checking like, hey, you're not allowed here if you're under 21. Let's say uh, if I'm greater than or equal to 21, okay, I kind of say you are an adult. But if I want to check if the age is, for example, is it's it's less than 21 but greater than uh, 18, for example, I could it announce if age is greater than or equal to uh, 18, you are uh, I don't know in college, something, and then otherwise if I'm like less. Than 18 years old, I could put the else there. You are so young, or whatever. So the thing with the if else if else statement is, what happens is first you're gonna hit the if statement here. You check this condition. If this is true, you execute this. If this is false, you go on to the else if and check the condition. If this is true, execute this. Otherwise, you keep on going and checking uh, every other else if. You could have many. Oops. Else ifs. And it just keeps on going, checking for the else if statements until it hits all the, hits the last statement with the else. And if everything failed before the else, you just do the else. And in this case, let's say I have 23. 23 greater than or equal to 21, true. It's going to execute this, and it's, it skips everything below. So let's test it out. You are an adult. Let's try 19. You are in college. What about 17? You are so young and so on 11 you are so young uh, so if you would like to add more conditions for example if you want to check for another kind of age range say uh, age check for something between 14 and 8 and between 14 and 17 you could add another else if and say you are between 14 and 17 Keep in mind I put 17 because this condition is checking equals whether it's greater than or equal to 18. So if I'm here, I have to be less than 18, but at the same time greater than or equal to 14. So if I put 11, what do I expect? You are so young because it comes here. This is false. This is false. This is false. Oh, this is true. No, this is false. I'm sorry. So and then it hits the else uh, because everything else failed so it says you are so young now let's uh, put the age to 14 see what's happened you were between 14 and 17 so why did we get that so let's take a look here so 14 greater than or equal to 21 false 
skip this, go to the next else if condition. 14 greater than or equal to 18, that's false. Skip the statement, go to the next if. 14 greater than or equal to 14, that is true. So execute this, and it skips everything below. Okay? So that's a control flow with else, if, else if, and else. That's a really basic control flow that uh, will allow you to control the uh, flow of your program and decide where it should go based on certain conditions. And keep in mind the else if is a single word without the else in between. Other languages might have it like this, but in Ruby it's just else if, else if. No E between the else and the if, else if. Okay, uh, the other thing I would like to talk about is about modifier forms, something that's really cool that you can do in Ruby. So instead of uh, saying if age is 21, put, do something and then put an end keyword, you can just modify this and do it like this. You can take this and put at the end, and you don't even an end keyword. So you can say whatever statement and this is going to be executed if this condition is true. So in this case it's going to be false so it's not going to say anything if you run the program. But if I change the age to 21 or greater than 21 it should say you are an adult. This is called modifier forms. Really nice. And it's great when you have short statements and you just need to make a quick check. But if your statements here are is more than a single statement or the single statement is just too long, just use the standard form that we had before. Alright? Now there is a, a kind of opposite of the if statement Ruby, that's the unless statement. And what it does, it checks the condition for false. If it's false, it executes the statement under the unless. So, for example, unless age is greater than 21, it's going to say. You are not allowed here. If I run this, you get nothing. But if my age is under 21, it's going to say, you are not allowed here. So what happened here? Is this confusing? It's confusing to me too. But it's just the opposite of if. So what it's doing is checking this condition. If it's false, it executes the statements. So it's saying like age 10 greater than or equal to 21. Well, that's false, right? Because this is false, it's going to execute the statements. And it's going to say you are not allowed here. So it's kind of like the opposite of if, because the if checks if the condition is true and executes the statements if that condition is true, but the unless checks if the condition is false and only executes these statements if that is false. So unless the age is greater than or to equal to 21, uh, it's going to say you are not allowed here. So that's the unless. And you can use a uh, else statement too just the way we had before to take care of the condition because if this is true it's not it's going to skip this and go to the else so it's the opposite of the if statement so if i'm 10 well i'm not allowed right but if i'm allowed 21 it's going to say welcome welcome so that's the unless. And unless also has the modifier form, so you can just put it at the end of a single statement like this. Unless age is greater than 21. You're not allowed here unless you are 21. 
So it's going to say nothing because I'm 21. If I'm 11, it's going to say you're not allowed here. All right, so let's now talk about looping. So this will be a quick introduction to looping. Uh, looping basically means go re making repetition, repeating things over and over. Uh, so the first thing that I'm going to introduce you right now is the iterator call times. It's really simple. Something really cool you can do in Ruby. For example, if I want to say hello ten times, I could say ten dot times, and I can say put as hello. Let's just try it out and talk about syntax later. Ten times, I want you to say hello ten times. Hello, 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 hello ten times. Isn't that cool? So this is called an iterator and it's acting upon the number object here, the fixed num object. And what do you have to do to make it work is you have to pass a Ruby block. So maybe you never heard of that term because I haven't introduced it in my videos, but it's gonna be uh you're gonna learn more about it later on. So Ruby blocks are enclosed between the do and end keyword if it's multi-line. So I use the do and end here. And I could add many other things like hello world and this would be hello and followed by world in the, each in their own lines ten times. So this is called a Ruby block and whatever's in between these for the case of the times iterator will be repeated ten times. Now if you want to do a block with one line you can use a brace if you just have one single thing instead of a do and end. And the convention for Ruby is if you're uh, the statement in your block you only have one line you put it between braces like this. And I run a program here hello hello ten times. This is also a block it's a single line block by Ruby conventions. If you want a single line block, use braces. But if you want a multi line blocks, you should use the do and end keyword, okay? Like so. So that's how you loop through the times iterator. Very useful. Now let's go to the while statement. While statement is predominant in many programming languages. This is the basic building block to make a loop and if you have a while loop you can do any other kind of loop. So the way while works is like so. You have while some condition do something then you end. Okay? I always put the end keyword right there. And now one thing I did not mention in the previous videos about Ruby comments. Ruby comments start with a hash and everything after the hash is ignored by the interpreter. So these are just for our for the developers, the programmers own sake. It is not something that's gonna be executed it's just for us to better understand our own code and to leave notes and so on so uh, it starts with a pound sign everything after the pound sign will be ignored by the interpreter so you can write anything there and nothing would happen okay now let's uh, write hello world ten times using a while loop so the thing to do here is you have to uh, have some way of control to keep track of where you are in the iteration. So you can have a counter variable and starts at maybe one and then while counter is uh, less than or equal to 10 what are you going to be doing is just say hello. So what's going on here? So we set a counter to the value one so it's going to check this. Is, is counter 
right? Less than or equal to 10. Well, initially 1 is less than or equal to 10, right? Then it's going to execute this. And the thing to keep in mind here is at the end of the loop, you have to uh, increment counter. Add 1 to it. Otherwise, you're going to get an infinite loop because this thing is always going to be counter less than or equal to 10. 1 is always less than or equal to 10. So it's going to run this forever. Keep saying hello, 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 hello forever. And that's n not some, that's, that's something you don't want to your program to have right that's really bad so I always put the increment operation at the end of the loop to make sure the count goes up by one and eventually it will hit the upper bound that will make the loop break and stop so to illustrate it I'm gonna comment this line 7 so remember everything after the pound sign is commented out and will not be executed it's just kind of a note so let's test it out and see what happens. I'm really scared. So keep saying hello forever, never stop. So see, I don't have a prompt. So I'm going to kill the process with control C to interrupt the program. You see it keeps growing forever. That's something we don't want to do. So don't forget to add the increment there. So if you're confused about this, I haven't explained this in the other videos. It's just the shortcut to say counter plus one. You're assigning counter a new value that is counter plus one. So if the counter is one, this is going to say one plus one, which is two. Okay. And then let's test it out. So we said hello ten times, right? five here, five at the top. So what happened here? Let's quickly go through it again. Set counter to one. As long as counter is less than or equal to ten, you keep saying hello and then you increment the counter at the end and check the condition again. Do the statements, check the condition until it hits ten here. So ten greater than or less than or equal to ten, that's true. Do it again and then it increments 10 to 11 and then 11 less than or equal to 10 that's false the loop stops loop loop breaks and your program keeps going to whatever you had after the loop okay so that's the while statement very basic looping construct in uh, many programming languages now like the if statement who had the uh, kind of opposite counterpart called unless while loop in Ruby also has a counterpart that's kind of its opposite and that's called until so until uh, we'll check if the condition is false and only executes the statement if that condition is false so you could say this until counter is that so in this case it's going to check this since this is true this is going to be not executed right because it's until it's the opposite let's check it out nothing happened so that's because uh, until it checks if the condition is false and only executes these statements if it's false so uh, what we could do is uh, maybe uh, start uh, the counter from and hit, hit the upper bound here like this set counter to one and keep looping until the counter is equal to 10 for example or greater than or equal to 10 same so it's gonna it's gonna say okay one greater than or equal to 10 that's false so because it's false it executes this and then increments counter now it's two two greater than or equal to 10 false three false four and so on and so on so when it hits 10 and then 11 11 greater than the first sorry when it hits 10 greater than or equal to 10 that's true so because it's true you break the loop and you stop so you print hello 10 times
There you go. You can just keep track of the variable if you want to know what its value is. You could put it here. Maybe I'll interpolate it here and put the counter inside a hello message so I see what counter is for every iteration. So let's check it out. So hello 1, hello 2, so on 9. Remember when it hits 10, it's going to stop, right? Oh, and I'm sorry, I think it's 9 here. Should have put it as a greater than. Alright, there you go. And until the counter is greater than 10, you keep uh, executing hello, hello, and so on. And that's uh, similar to the, uh, if you want to make it while, you have to make this condition keep true. And as long as it's true, it'll be executed. But the until is the opposite. So as long as the condition is false, you keep executing it. All right. So uh, this is about it for the video. I'd like to review a few things that we talked about. First, talked about a little bit about variable naming conventions for local variables. We uh, should use lowercase, and if there are multiple words in a variable name, we should separate them using an underscore in between. We also talked about string concatenation, uh, which is another way to uh, uh, combine strings and uh, the value of other variables. Uh, I'd like to use interpolation more than concatenation, but uh, the use will depend on context, so use them wisely. Uh, then we went on to talk about comparison operators, greater than, less than, and so on. Uh, remember that uh, the double equal sign is used for comparison if the two objects are equal, and if you want to check if they're not equal to, you can use the exclamation point followed by a equal sign. And let me type it right here. Equal to, not equal to. And after that, we went on to talk about control flow uh, to see how you can uh, change the direction of your program depending on certain conditions. Uh, we did the if statement and then we make it made it a little more complex uh, using the if else. Uh, then we did if, else if, and else. Uh, just a reminder that you can have uh, many else ifs as you want to define multiple, condition, multiple conditions that we you would like to check. So you could have if, else if, else if, else if, and keep going, and then an else. So it's going to keep checking all the conditions in the if and else if. And if all, not, all of these conditions fail, it's going to go to the else block. So there's always a way that your program will fall into. So if it doesn't, if it, fa it can fall in the if, the else if, but if it fails everything, it will always go to else. We talked about modifier form, which is a convenient way that you can make an if or unless statement. You can say uh, do something if whatever condition instead of having to say if condition and open a block uh, indentation and block and type something and end. For example, put as hello if age greater than 21 and so on. Uh, after that we went to talk about looping. I introduced briefly introduced the times iterator. Very simple. We can say just 10 times and you pass a block to execute something. It's low and this will do the 10 times. And we talked about a little bit about Ruby blocks. Uh, uh, we just uh, briefly touched upon it. We know uh, you should use a a do and end if you do have a multi-line block and if you only have a single line it's better that the convention is to use braces okay uh, these will become more clear to you later on as you learn about Ruby blocks after that finally uh, did the while loop that's a 
allows you to check a condition and keeps keep looping iterating until the condition is false whereupon the loop will break and the program will move on to do something else similarly we did the until until is like the opposite counterpart of the while loop and the until will check if the condition is false and only execute the statements if this condition is false alright so that's it for the video I really appreciate your watching it and if you liked please subscribe I really appreciate that thank you very much have a good day and keep on learning any questions please uh, in a, leave in the comments below uh, any suggestions and so on to really appreciate it thank you